In this video, I'll be talking about matrices and how we can use matrices to solve systems of equations. So first of all, a matrix or a matrix, a matrices is plural. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. Now, we don't really use the word array a whole lot in English these days. Uh, arrangement might be an, a better word. Um, so an M by N matrix has M rows and N columns which we call either the dimension or the size of the matrix. So when I think of columns, I think of Roman columns and they go this way and rows go the opposite direction. So in the first uh, matrix here, we have two rows and two columns. Now remember, we write the rows first, although this time it's <laughs> they're both the same. So this is a two by two matrix. And notice where I put that uh, we normally like to label the dimensions of a matrix right in the bottom right corner. On uh, number two here, you have one, two, three, four rows and one column. And so this is a four by one matrix. So I'd encourage you to do three and four and then watch the video. All right, so let's see how you did. You should have gotten three by two on number three, since there's three rows and two columns. And then for the last one, that would be a one by two matrix, one row and two columns. All right, so next we talk about writing a system as an augmented matrix. So basically an augmented matrix is a matrix that represents a system of equations. And so if you look at these two, the system versus the matrix, we're basically taking our coefficients of x and those go in the first column. We do the same thing with y and z. Notice the last column is the constants that are on the right side of the equation. And we use that line, this line right here, to uh, separate the coefficients of the variables from the constants. All right, so on number two, you can see there is no x value. I mean, you could think of this as zero x. And so when you write that matrix, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you put a zero in for the coefficient of x in the second row. All right, so let's move on to the next slide and let's talk about matrix row operations. So there are certain things that we were able to do when we were solving systems of equations, whether it was two equations and two variables or three equations and three variables. Um, notice here it says that we can switch any two rows. And thinking back to what we did with the equations, if we wanted to switch two equations or at least the order of the equations, it doesn't matter which one goes first or second or third. And so that's the same concept here. And so there's an example here. In, the, in this first matrix, you can see that this notation means we're swapping uh, or switching row two and row three. So these two rows get switched. And so that's the first row operation that we, that we have. We can swap two rows. Um, next, we can multiply a row by any number. Notice here it says, we're gonna, uh, we have some number times row two will become the new row two. So that's what that arrow indicates is we're gonna multiply row two by some number and that's gonna become our new row two. So basically we're gonna multiply any row by a non-zero scalar. And in this world of matrices, we call a value or just a number, um, like in this case, a number we're multiplying by a scalar because it's not a matrix. All right, so if you look at the example here, I multiplied two times, negative two times row one, and that becomes the new row one. So notice this is row one, multiply everything by negative two, and now you have this row here. And so if you think about uh, when we were solving systems of equations, and really, when we solve equations from the very beginning, we know that we can multiply both sides of an equation by some number. And when you do that, each term gets multiplied by the number. 
And so this is the equivalent in matrix form. And then finally, um, in the third case here, it says multiply row 1 by some number and add that to row 2, and that becomes the new row 2. So let me just go ahead and write the corresponding equations here. Let's say it'd be x plus 2y plus 3z equals 4, and 5x plus 6y plus 7z equals 8. Now you may recall if we were wanting to eliminate x, for example, I would multiply the first row by negative 5 so that I would get a negative 5x for the first term. And I'd have to do that times each of these numbers here. So multiply every term by negative 5. And then I would add that to row 2, or the second row here, and we would get, we would eliminate x and get some new row. And so that's the basic idea of what's going on here with this third operation. And we use this one quite frequently. So you can see our example here. We're multiplying negative 3 times row 1, and we're going to add that to row 3, and that's going to give us the new row 3. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. And we're going to practice this. So it says perform the following row operation for the given augmented matrix. All right, so here we're going to take, on, on example 3, we're going to take 1 fourth times row 1, and that's going to become our new row 1. Well, when we do this kind of thing with matrices, we use um, multiplication. Now, if you, if you look at the first row, really, we can just divide everything by, f by 4. That's the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. So instead of dividing by 4, we're basically multiplying by the reciprocal of 4, which is 1 fourth. So sometimes, uh, let's see, you could actually write this as r1, or row 1, divided by 4, that becomes your new row 1. And, uh, and really, this is the same. It's still 1 fourth times row 1 is going to give you the new row 1. So division multiplying by a fourth, it's all the same. So the new matrix, notice the, the second row doesn't change. And we'll divide all our terms in the first row by 4. We get 1, 2, and negative 4. All right, on number 4, it says here we're going to multiply row 1 times negative 2, and we're going to add that to row 2, and that's going to become our new row 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So notice row 1 doesn't change. By the way, it's this, it's this row here that will always be uh, replacing or changing. And so here, um, I want to multiply row 1 times negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And now if I add these numbers, I'm going to get 0. Negative 6 and negative 1 is negative 7. And negative 8 and 5 is negative 3. And so that's an example of how we would use that operation. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number 5. Now, on number 5, we're basically going to start with the same uh, matrix each time. And we're going to do part A, B, and C. So we won't just keep changing. Like, we could do A and get some new matrix. And then with that one, we would do part B and then so on. But that's not how it works we're going to always start with the original matrix. And so let's go ahead and do A first. And if we're going to swap rows 1 and 2, that means row 3 doesn't change. I tend to like to write in the row or rows that aren't going to change. And then I'm just going to uh, switch rows 1 and 2. And so you can see I have done that. And so that's the answer to part A. So when we do B, 
Again, we're starting with the same matrix. We're not using the one we just got. Okay, so we're going to do 5 times row 2, and that's going to become the new row 2. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and write down the first and the third row, because those don't change. And 5 times row 2 will get 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 times 8 is 40. And 5 times, uh, whoops, uh, yeah, negative 1 is negative 5. And 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And uh, I would encourage you to maybe try C and then watch the video. So row 1 doesn't change, and uh, in fact row 2 doesn't change either. You can see that row 3 is the, uh, the row that's going to change. Basically we have negative 4 times row 2. We're going to add that to row 3 and that will become our new row 3. And so let's multiply negative 4 times row 2. Negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. Negative 4 times 8 is negative 32. Negative 4 times negative 1 is 4, and negative 4 times negative 3 is 12. And so now we'll add those values with the third row values, and so we'll get 8 and negative 8, which is 0. Negative 32 and negative 3 is negative 35. Um, 4 and minus 2 is 2, and 12 and 0 is 12. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, it says for the augmented matrix, what row operation will result in a 1 in row 2, column 2? So row 2, column 2, well, the second row is here, the second column is here, so that would be the negative 4. Um, so we want to get a 1 right there. So think about our three row operations what would be the easiest way to get a 1 in that position? All right, well, notice negative 4, negative 8, and negative 12 are all divisible by negative 4, so it makes sense to divide by negative 4. Now remember, the way we write that is multiplication by the reciprocal. That would be multiplying by negative 1 fourth. And so we're going to do negative 1 fourth times row 2 and that's the new row 2. All right, let's look at, why don't you try 7 and 8 and then watch the video for those. All right, so on 7 it says uh, we want to get a 0 in row 2, column 1. So we want to get a 0, row 2, column 1. That's the 5 right here. So how would I get a 0 there? Well, you're going to want to multiply the first row by Basically, what I want is a negative 5 here in the first row, so that when I add rows 1 and 2, I get 0. And so we're going to multiply row 1 by negative 5 and add that to row 2, and that'll become our new row 2. All right, let's look at number 8. It says, for the augmented matrix, what row operation will result in a 0 in row 3, column 1? That would be right here. Now, keep in mind, you could just flip or swap rows 2 and 3. That would be pretty easy. But when you see what we're going to be doing when we solve systems, we're going to want a 1 in this position, and then a 0 below that 1 in, in both of these positions. And so normally, you would leave the 0 alone in that second row. And so... I'm going to actually give you both answers here. So again, we could flip or swap rows 2 and 3, but when we start solving systems, we would actually want to multiply the first row by 3 and add that to row 3, and that would get a new row 3 that has 0 in that position. All right, that's going to be it for this first video. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use these augmented matrices to solve the system.